Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I'm super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition today. It looks like it's going to be from the Battle 2020 Jack and Jill Open Finals. That means this is going to be up in the air. I don't know what the level is going to be officially for this Open, but I can tell you it can be all over the place. And I'm going to be looking for some key factors. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I was looking for after this competition. So are you ready? Hey. Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen. This Let's intro of this event is never going to get old. You sold me once you start playing that rocky music. <coughs> All right. Please. Give it up for the finalists on their warm-up song. Finalists. Here we go. Warm-up song. I'm going to be looking for confidence in this warm-up song. Because clearly they can all dance. So uh, a couple I like so far, Please. number yeah, one couple, the couple in the black, he's got black, she's got a red oh, so dress on, uh, I like them the most because they weren't trying to like impress the judges or anything like that, they're just warming up, just warming up. Alright, so starting on the green, 16-8. 16 eighths. 16 eighths. Here we go. It's gonna get it's gonna get rough. Lucia and Demo. I didn't see his name. <clears throat> What I like so far, <clears throat> the, the personality of the follower is much more expressive than the leader, but he doesn't feel like he's competing against her. He's not trying to outdo her. So personality-wise, they're a perfect fit. He's a little bit more relaxed. She's a little bit more expressive. So now I can appreciate their union um, just by default, because they're not struggling to fight each other. All right, let's see what happens with this one. Benedict and Clement. Yes. <clears throat> All right, so I give the first round to the first couple just because I, f I feel from my observation 
that the leader and the follower understand a little bit more on how to manipulate the technique in basic shapes. Okay. Oh, he's getting into space. <laughs> I like that. All right. Okay. Um, so for, for me, again, it will go to the other couple. To, on the right for me, uh, let's see if they're going to end up on the green. Mainly because they had better sense of the control of the technique, but plus I think they had better timing, where the leader was less active, allowing the follower, uh, who had a more expressive personality, to be able to do that. And in exercising that restraint as a leader, I was able to see them better as a couple. So, for me, they were the winners on that. <clears throat> I think some of the other instructors picked that group. Two. Wow, let's see. Okay. Okay. I like their energy so far. Okay, great ending on that. <clears throat> Rock on, come on. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, I already like this couple a little bit better. And it's because I can see the follower a little bit more. Uh, the leader is not as anxious to move as much as the follower. Therefore, it automatically looks like he has more control of the technique. Okay, so that first round for me, uh, barely, by a hair, went for the last couple. Let's see what happens in this one. Okay, so far, they're doing a better job on this one. They're actually matching the timing of the music a little better. Okay, good timing. <laughs> Here's what's happening. As much as I feel like the couple with the black and red had better control because the leader wasn't rushing, I still think even though the leader on the other group was rushing and I couldn't see the follower as much, I'm still going to have to give it to them because they had a better repertoire of movements with the technique. They were doing a little bit more. Yeah, so for me, they were so close, but I would have barely picked the couple with the gray and uh, she had black, the purple shirt with the red shoes. I would have picked them just a little bit more. <clears throat> the only drawbacks I would say is they got disconnected twice. On both, on uh, one first set and the second set.
between Demosthenes and Lucia and Clemo and Ratka. So yeah, let's keep it that way. Just the green, the bread. Okay, this is exactly the same. 16, 8, 16, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Okay, get ready for the final next song. <coughs> All right, let's take a look. Here we go. This could be interesting. So far, they haven't lost what I thought got them to the final anyway. The leader's moving just a little less than his partner. <clears throat> Not afraid to take their time. Okay, let's see what happens. I think the the couple that was before this is did a bit, little bit better job so far. <clears throat> I think the leader's a little rushed on this particular set. And all it does, if, if they rush, it means that you can't actually see the follower do the response to the call. And therefore, it diminishes everything. Yeah, just because he's moving slower, there's, it gives opportunity for improvisation. That tie grab was perfect. Yeah, good ending, good ending, good ending. <clears throat> So for me, I think the couple that just went black and red, they had a little bit more confidence with the leader, but I think because of the confidence that was there, it, it, it caused him to move a little too much. And I couldn't appreciate them both as a couple because of that as much as I did for the first couple. <clears throat> so my, I'm gonna, my winner is to the right. He's got the tie, she's got the brown pants and black shirt. Yeah, they're, they're my winners too. There you have it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Look at that. Very good. Very good. Let's talk about this one. This one was pretty evenly matched. I would say so. When I think about all of the, the dancers' ability to actually be in the competition, I couldn't critique them too much. I think all of the dancers, no matter what level they uh, progressed in, in terms of where they finally ranked, all shared some type of weakness. And at the open level, it's kind of expected. It's kind of expected to have some little bit of like disconnected, um, quirky little moves that aren't really just personality, but they're just kind of um, weak technique. Just they don't understand certain things about the technique, which Honestly, when if they just stay in the game and just keep practicing and dancing and being hard on themselves in a very like balanced way, then usually those types of things will just fall off naturally. They don't have to just like attack them head on right now because you definitely don't want to discourage 
um, your own creativity and your own process because it definitely will frustrate you. But <clears throat> in noticing that, I normally I normally have to think about who are these dancers right now before they become too polished. And I'm looking at their style. I'm looking at their personality, how they like to express themselves. Um, and it's difficult to assess that after this level, once they're open and then they get into advance and then strictly and uh, all star and above, a lot of times your awareness has been expanded and it's hard to go back to that feeling that you had when you first started swing dancing, where you just had a sense of abandon and a, a uniqueness that you really couldn't see at the time. Other people could see it, but for you, you probably looked at it as your weaknesses. So I look for those unique qualities when I'm looking at this competition and the beauty of it is that each couple had something that was special. Like uh, my favorite couple, if I'm just watching this, my favorite dancer was probably the dancer, uh, the follower who was with the winning uh, leader. She had the brown pants on. It looks like it is. she had a black shirt. She was my favorite follower to watch. She was my favorite dancer to watch just because she had a, a, just a natural sense of understanding what the music is doing at a certain time of the music and she knew how to embellish that visually so that i could appreciate the music more but more importantly i got a glance at her joy and personality and she transmitted that belief on me a little bit and i like that when i can feel those kind of emotions from a dancer i want to watch them more so as a whole she was my favorite dancer and i would say my second favorite dancer um, for the control part has to go to the winner. The leader who actually won with her had the best control for the level of open for me. That's kind of what I look for is can the leader not be too concerned about being flashy, uh, doing a bunch of syncopations, tr being loud. I'm really seeing if the patient, if the leader can exercise a modicum of patience, just just a little bit. Patience and discipline not to move too much. And I think that's really hard to accomplish. Sometimes leaders have it naturally if it's that's, that's, that's their personality, but for leaders that like to express themselves a little more, I was like that, you know? And I wanted to say stuff on every beat and I understood that. But a lot of times my mindset was in working on different things. So I wasn't actually thinking about an audience watching me do this. But when it came to presentations like competitions, I would think about it that way. I'd calm down a little bit and I'd place my special movement that's super loud at a very specific spot in the music. And I think if, if leaders can understand uh, that type of countenance at the open level, it will help them be able to mature at leading and always being being in a level of um, high opinion of other dancers because their control or their technique is super high. Not saying that that's the only thing that they do, but they've gone through the process to make sure that they can maintain a high level of control of the lead, the role of leading, not being loose and lazy on that. So he was my favorite leader out of all the dancing. I'd say my. Uh, I think the couple that had the most ideas, or I think the leader, uh, the follower that has the most ideas was the one I've mentioned before, but the leader who has, the, he's going to be the one that I watch for the future. Because I was noticing even in the warm up, he was doing, and I haven't mentioned who it is yet, but this leader was doing different kinds of movements, playing around with different shapes, taking risk and trying to do things a little differently. For me, I appreciate that. And I immediately start watching dancers like that to see if they how long they will stay on fire for the dance and loving just the creative aspects of it um, because those tend to be the people who either they only they go two ways they either they become a part of the circuit they win a bunch of competitions and they uh, just stay there and that's it or they keep pushing artistically and they, they know when to do things in a competition that are politically correct in a competition. And then when they're done, they haven't lost their street credibility, their ability to actually just jam and grime and create stuff and not be afraid of that process. 
And it's hard for this type of dancer to do that. But the dancer I'm talking about is, is the leader. He had a gray suit on and a black bow tie. I think he had a, maybe even a ponytail. But those are the leaders that I watch because they're not afraid to try different things. But even in doing that, trying different things is a hard thing to maintain as you get better with the technique. So please keep doing that. Whoever you are, it's really, really cool to see that you're willing to take risk in a competition like this. Because really, you're the kind of dancers, which is what we call the dancers of the future. You guys have all the ideas that other people will take and they'll refine those ideas and they'll probably put names to your moves in the future. <laughs> That's just how it works. So um, great job. Great job on his dancing. So the other dancers, like I said, there, there wasn't anything that was tremendously bad. Everybody is what I expected for this level, but there's certain things that I have to draw attention to at this level that are kind of like ahead of their time. Like, and that's, like I said, the leader who won is ahead of his time when it comes to understanding, knowing how to have restraint as a leader and focusing in on the main objective of what you're doing, which is sharing energy with someone else and making sure that person doesn't get hurt. And while you're doing that, you might make it look different and take extra risks. But number one, they're leading. And then number two, they're embellishing it with different things. And so he's he naturally is understanding that. So big shout out to him and the follower with him. She never just like left the line or started doing all this stuff that made him have to think about not dancing with his partner, but taking care of his partner so she doesn't get hurt. I didn't see that. I didn't see her just like go crazy and like doing all kinds of like <laughs> stuff while they're dancing. She was expressing herself within the context of following. That doesn't mean that she's a good follower. It just means that she was expressing herself within the language of following. And I like that because following number one is following first. You're sharing energy with another body. But if you can express yourself differently doing that, that's a bonus. But if you just do that and you look great, but then when you're dancing with your partner and it doesn't feel good and it's clunky and professionals could look through what you're doing and see that you're not actually sharing energy with your partner and it's a little, it just feels and looks like it's forced, then we know. We know that. And it looks appealing to the audience, but we know the truth. Everybody knows the relationship has is, is having trouble, <laughs> right? So I didn't get those vibes from her at all. Never saw her tensing up her arms or anything. So I'm proud of them, and I hope uh, they get all the credit they deserve for winning that because that was the couple that I would have picked too. They gave me two flags. I would have been like, yes, they win. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this competition because some of you, I'm sure you're like, look, I didn't like them. I think the other couple won. They were better. You know, They were more flashy, blah, blah, blah. Let me know why you think so. What kind of standard do you, based on what standard do you like to judge competitions? Is it all on subjectivity? Is it based on how you feel? Is it based on what you personally like and you hope people dance the way you like and then therefore you judge them poorly or highly? I don't know. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. If you guys are wanting to get better at improvisation, that's my specialty. My specialty is taking improvisation and making it look like it's a performance and making it look like it's choreographed. Some of my best performances were all just improvised. But because I had a natural understanding of how to place my movements with my partner in the music, it always looks like it's something bigger than what it really is. It's definitely leadable and you can follow a lot of the ideas that I had, but it was based on a format. So if you're interested in that format, I have a four part series on musicality that will help you understand like how to do all the aspects of musicality, but yet still keep it simple and street smart where you're not having to think in your head like musicality, I gotta count on this beat and then I've gotta step to the right and then I've gotta channel the energy in my arm to lead my partner. We, we try to eradicate that sense of complexity uh, in your dancing so that you can get to the point of expressing yourself uniquely within a specific simple context. So I encourage you to check out uh, some of my courses below. Uh, if you guys want to get a taste of how we approach the dance, I got about 20 other courses that are there for free. So you guys can check it out, get a taste of what I spend all my time doing for our community. I got a home studio next door. We're just creating moves all the time, every single week, Monday and Tuesday, getting new fresh classes. If you want to taste that a little bit, I encourage you to check it out. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section. 
Uh, if I don't see you in class online, hopefully I'll get a chance to hear your rational opinion in the comment section. Take care.